Hello everyone and welcome to this modeling part of this course. In the previous edition of this course, I used a correlation map or, or better still, I used its map uh, to check the correlation between my input feature and my targets. And don't forget, if you look carefully, I used present price in place of my selling price, which is the target. I know you might have some questions like, why do I have to use present price? Yes, if you look at it carefully, present price and my target, which is the selling price, they have the same correlation. So the intuition here is I can use any one of them as my target. That is just one uh, big tip I'm giving out to you. Once you have an input feature and a target having the same correlation, you can use any one of them in place of your analysis. So yeah, I will now show you the effects of having this present price in your model and without it. So yeah, I've created two uh, multidimensional array, one with the present price and the other one without the present price. We would see the effects of this. So let's run this. And uh, the next thing is to uh, create is to create a new variable that we will store the input feature into a variable and the target into uh, another variable. So let's say the input variable is an x, a variable name. Then data underscore d that is the variable name. So here I have to drop the target because the idea here is to have my input feature separately and my target feature separately. So that would be call my parenthesis, then drop uh, the selling price, which is the target. Selling price, which is the target, then axis, which is I'm dropping from the column. So axis equals to one. So the my y is the target. So data underscore df dot selling underscore price which is the target. So I have, with these two line of codes, I have separated my input from my, from my output. So that's that basically. So the idea next, the next thing to do here is to, you know, separate my, separate some, separate some test data points for evaluation. Uh, yeah, I'll be using the train test bit. I would use 70% to train my model and 30% to test the performance of my model. So yeah, with that, basically, I will just import from SKLN. I will import from SKLN. SKLN. SKLN dot model underscore selection. From import train underscore test underscore split. So with this function, I've, uh, I'm importing the train test split function. Then the idea is to pass in my four variable names. Uh, the one for the inputs and targets of the print set and the other one for the input and target for the text set. So the first one is the X train, comma the X tests, comma the Y train, comma the Y train, sorry. X okay X train, sorry, comma the Y train, comma the Y tests. So calling my train tests function. So that is I'll pass in my input variable, then my output variable. Then the test size I'm splitting. So I'm splitting it into 30%. That is 0 0.3 means 30%. So I have to pass a random state. It can be any number. Let me use 42 for instance. So the random state is for reproductivity. Whenever I want to rerun this model and I want to get the same performance and the results, this random state will, this random state will store the results and uh, and give me the actual results I, I had before in my initial model. So the next thing is to, uh, I've split that into train and test. So the next thing is to call in my algorithm that will learn from this data pattern. So yet, there are many types of algorithm, there are many, there are many, out, there are many of it out there. But basically, yet, I will just use random forest to just build this simple model. So from SKLearn, let me import from SKLearn.assemble imports random forests random forest random forest okay imports random forest regressor this is your regression but random forest, forest regressor so okay good so now let me store my model let me store my model into a variable name called let me store my algorithm to a variable name called model so that's random forest regressor so I'll instantiate my model here. 
I'm building a simple model. I'm not passing any parameter now. Just make it so simple. No parameter for tuning. Just a simple random forest regression. So yes, yeah, I've instantiated my model. So the next thing is to train on my train set. Then I will call the fit function. Model dot fit to train on my train set, which I split into seventy percent here. So with this basic line of code, my model is learning from the train set now. So once I'm done, why this is learning and why we are waiting for this model to learn, the next thing is to predict. Let me create a variable name called prediction. Prediction. So this one is to predict on my X test. Model dot predict. Model dot predict. Model dot predict. Oh, what's wrong with my keyboard? Model dot predict x underscore test so okay why that is still loading so uh, uh that's model dot predict underscore model dot predict then uh, i want to put it on my hex test now so this would uh once my once the training is done uh, this line of code will be able to predict on my x test that is my 30 percent of the test sets i separated yet so the next thing is uh to uh check uh the to, to to call in my metrics that would check uh how well is my model doing so in this instance there we are using arguments that is good mean squared error so the closer to zero uh the better it is just accept that basic assumption for now so from sklearn imports metrics this time means uh the model is still learning so once this style change okay wow it has learned finished so i can now predict on my x test Okay, X test is not defined. So what's the name? Okay, this is the name I used. No underscore. So it's predicting on my X test now. Wow, it has predicted finished. So whenever you are seeing a, a an asterisk, it, it means the cell is still loading. But now it has loaded. It has predicted on my X test now. So let me just run through my metrics and evaluate my model. So I've imported my metrics here. Then let me print. Let me write the, the print function here. So. RMSC, this is just a variable, it could be anything. RMSC, comma, np dot square root. No, why am I using caps lock? np dot sq, I would say that's square root. Then the matrix dot mean underscore squared, underscore squared error. So, uh, my y test, okay, and my prediction, my y test is the actual value. So I want to check uh, the met I want to check the, the RMS for my model, how my model is doing well. So the right test is the actual value and the predictions is the predicted value. Name MP is not defined, okay? NumPy has not been imported. So let me import NumPy as MP. So as you can see, uh, my RMS value is 3.0. So the closer to zero, the better the performance of the model. So what that is done, so the next thing is, uh, this model are not uh, they are not useful in an environment like this. We need to take them into a production environment or into another environment where where we would put it into uh, a production system. So from here we can then uh, take in the continuity of the work into uh, an, an, a new environment. So in such instance, here, I would save this model as a pico file, and from the pico file. Uh, in other environments like the Visual Studio Code, I would just continue from that pico file. Or even if I'm trying to build a model directly without not doing any uh, front end design, with that with that pico file, I'll be able to predict and not running all this code again from the beginning. So the pico file is just like it's storing uh, the your algorithm uh, prediction. So whenever I call the pico file, I don't need to run all this notebook again. So let's import pico to save the model as a pico file. So then I have to call it an open function here. The open function, the open function will create a file name for me. Let me just say okay random random forest underscore model dot pkl. That pkl is the file name extension. So then I'll pass in the argument which is wb. Wb means that the file is opened for writing. So I've created I've created the name of the file the pico file and I, and I and I and I pass in the argument that this file is ready for writing into a binary code. So once that is done, then I dump it as a pico file here using the pico dot dump method. So then what is the name of the model? My name of the model, the name I use for 
uh, instantiating the uh, um, and the algorithm here is model. So model comma the file name I opened. So with this, I've been able to save the model as a pico file. So just using this pico file, I don't need this notebook anymore. This pico file is enough for me to go ahead with any other developments I want to do. So with just this file alone, I don't need to rerun all this notebook. So that's one big advantage of pico file. It will help you. It's just more or less like you are you are. It's, it's, it's similar. It's more or less like you are using an API. So that's that basically. So now. We've trained the model, we've pickled it. Now, don't forget what I want to show you here. The effect of using the present price into our model and without it. So now, let me just copy uh, this for me. So, we, to see the uh, future importance of the model. Okay, x plane is not the vinyl. Okay, small letter x was what I used. Okay, good. Wow. So, as you can see now, do you see the effects of the present price in our model? Our model has not learned anything at all. It has picked present price as the only feature that is important for the ability of this model. So this is a very bad model. No, the other features are not even having any effects on the. Uh, on, they are not even having any effects on the predicting power of the targets. So this is a bad model. So now let's try to run the second one I created yet. Data underscore df. This second one with the present price. So we we'll now see the effects of that too also. So just add two here so we can be able to check from that so the same thing here just run all through so we'll observe the rms score and at the same time we would observe the feature importance because here we can see that the model is not learning anything only present price the model is telling us that with only present price it can predict the selling price wow this is what about if we don't have the present price in our future in the in the in the, in, in the real development uh, environment that is that would be a, a that would be a, a very bad model in the production so we can't uh, rely on this in production for a, a single feature having the predicting power we can't rely on this in, in the production so what we do here is to we'll drop the present price here just for you to see what is happening here don't forget the whole idea is to see how a model is being built from start to the end so that's the whole idea of uh, this uh, model here so um, i'm waiting for that to load and while that is loading we would now see the effects of removing the present price in our model then, then compare that to when the present price model was there so let me just copy this basically and paste it here so we would just have two visuals here and see them clearly the effects of the model okay good Wow, so you can see now. Do you see now? Like, do you see the difference between the charts now? When I removed uh, the present price, do you see here is now being here? Here, here is the most important feature here for uh, the predicting power of my targets. And also, you can see uh, KMS driven selling price. They are all at least every input feature has contribution to my targets, unlike this chart here. So basically, you can now see the effect of when you have is when you have a strong correlation with your target, like 100% uh, correlation. You can, you can now see the effect it will have in your model. So, in the real sense, you will drop the present price as I've said earlier. But uh, for this uh, part of this tutorial, I'm not dropping it just for you to see the end. So just for you to see the end-to-end -end development parts. So basically, you can now see the effect of the present price in our feature and without it. So that's that basically.